too long because we, I think we've already pretty much uh, spent our time. But I am going to talk about the differences between the three because so many times we hear them used interchangeably. And so a lot of times we may even miss the healing value of like the essential oils and even the carrier oils because a lot of times our carrier oils can be used to help penetrate the body to let that essential oil do, you know, really do its job. So when we talk about essential oils, we're usually talking about plant oils, and sometimes we're talking about the roots and the stems and the barks of oils, and they distill those oils so that you can get the concentrated value of the oil. Whereas with, say, if we're using a fragrance oil, that's something that's pretty much a synthetic thing. They've given you a flavor. You know, I hear people say, well, I want, uh, I want great lip balm. And I do have a, so a great one, but it's not going to be that great that they're accustomed to, that you've been given through fragrance that tells you, well, this is how grape smells, this is how strawberry smells, because if you've had fresh fruit, you know that grape doesn't smell like that, you know that strawberry doesn't smell like that, so then you have to wonder, well, what did they use to tweak my senses so that I believe that when I smell this fragrance oil, I'm smelling grape and I'm smelling strawberry and apple and all those other scents, but there's a lot that goes into the making of fragrance oils, which is a lot of times, you'll see that if they, if someone is selling them, they're not listing all the items because the the list could be so long, you know, for that one fragrance oil because it contains so many chemicals, some of them toxic, some of them not. And I tell people everything is a chemical. Even our body is made of, you know, molecular chemicals. So when you're talking about chemicals, then you can talk about the difference between harmful chemicals and, you know, and, and chemicals that are not. And even some so-called natural, more natural chemicals can be harmful to somebody else. You know, that's like if I'm eating a chemical called pineapple. If it's raw and it's fresh, you may as well have an emergency room there and some epinephrine because I'm going to need it for the anaphylactic shock that occurs. But somebody else can sit there and eat a whole pineapple and not have any, you know, <laughs> except for to say it, this is the best fresh pineapple I've ever had. You know, so, so that's, the, that's the difference when we're looking at the difference between, you know, harmful and, not, you know, what's harmful for one may not be harmful for others. But then there are some things that are just harmful to all of us. And that's when we're looking at a lot of things with fragrance oils and the synthetic chemicals that are placed in a lot of those. We have to be careful with them. Essential oils, the same thing. You could have a reaction to an essential oil just because it's natural. You know, poison ivy is natural, but who wants it? You know, so just because it's natural doesn't mean, you know, and that's why I always tell people to do a sensitivity test. You know, you want to put it on the skin of just a little bit, and then you want to wait a while and see if you got any reaction from it. But essential oils are great healing oils. And another thing we see with essential oils is we have some companies that say that their essential oils are pure, but they're not necessarily pure. And I'm just going to do a little quick purity test so while we're talking, we can actually, this is one of the default tests that you can do to see if your essential oil is as pure as they say it all is. If it has been diluted in any way, when you place essential oil onto a cloth napkin, it's going to leave a stain. And that tells you that it's not pure. See right here, you can see this This is orange because it's a sweet orange oil that I'm using and I'm going to pass that around to you. But as it dries, even that color should evaporate from it if it is a true essential oil. If it is not a true essential oil, that stain is going to remain and you'll know exactly where I pour it to drop on. You know, so that's one way to tell if your essential oils are, are you know, and I get that a lot from uh, customers. They'll send an email and say, hey, I'm using uh, the Terra, I think it is, or I'm using the Nile brand or something, and I need to know if my oil is a good oil. You know, and those I've tested, and so far those have always passed the, you know, the purity as far as the napkin test goes. You know, I've never had any of those two brands uh, not pass the purity test. I can't talk for, you know, speak for a lot of others because there's so many different brands out there. But that's a way to tell. And then when it comes to our carrier oils, such as jojoba oil, that is a, a, that's called a carrier oil, and you may want to dilute your essential oil in a carrier oil. Now, you'll hear two things said. You'll tell, hear people say, never put essential oils on neat. And then you'll hear others say, well, you can put it on neat if you know what you're doing. <laughs> I come from a family of healers. My grandmother, my great-grandmother, my grandfather, all of those people, people would come and get little paper bags. Know, we'd sit on the porch and watch them come in and out the door like they're revolving door to collect their little bags. Some of them would have essential oil, some of them would have dried herbs, it all depends on what they're doing. And the thing that I do growing up, there were times when my grandmother would say, no, we need to put this right here because we need it to go directly to the bloodstream without any interference from anything. And then there were other times when she would give them a mixture and there would be an essential oil, uh, carry oil. And one of her favorite carry, uh-oh, one of her favorite carrier 